Hello and welcome. Welcome to the MBA and Law Info Session on Financing. My name is Anna Patterson and I'll be walking you through this webinar. Together with me today is here Alexander Damet, who's going to be the expert on this topic today. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hi, doing? Anna. I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Hello to everyone. Great. So we are um, basically providing you with some information today and a few slides. If you have any questions, though, in the meantime, please send them to us. There's a chat box you can use on this Adobe Connect platform. And I'll be asking your questions later today to Alex. So keep that in mind as we move along today. OK, Alex, so I'd say let's get Shall started. we just uh, jump into the topic? Yes. OK, I'll see you in a bit. OK, guys, hello again. Uh, welcome to our webinar uh, or the info session on financing. Um, we'll do it quick today so that uh, we can use your uh, lunch break wisely. Um, well, doing an MBA is obviously always uh, uh, an investment. It's not only an investment on time and energy and studying and uh, writing assignments, but it's also a financial, um, financial investment and it can be a burden. So what... Uh, what we want to do, and uh, uh, one of our goals is to uh, try to, um, to ease this burden uh, for you, and this is why we have installed some mechanisms um, where we can assist you with, uh, with the financing of this MBA. Um, we have a couple of slides, so uh, we'll walk through them quite quickly, and feel free to post your questions anytime, and we'll pick them up after the presentation. Now, when it comes to the MBA, um, at uh, VU Executive Academy, there are a couple of payment methods uh, we provide. Uh, you see them on the slide. Um, first of all, um, the tuition fee doesn't need to be paid on, on the very first day of the program, so you don't need to pay everything in advance once you're admitted to the program. Um, we do offer a payment by installment plan. Um, I'll show you uh, on the next slides how this can look like. Uh, in Just in a nutshell, um, the payment schedule always is composed um, of um, a seat confirmation fee, which is usually 10% of the tuition fee, and then uh, some, uh, some of a couple of installments. Um, the interesting aspect here is that, uh, at least for taxpayers in Austria, um, you can split the payments uh, over two to three fiscal years, depending on the program. Uh, hence, you can um, make use of tax advantages uh, if you pay your taxes in Austria. Um, second payment pa method is uh, payment with Western Union. We have introduced that a couple of uh, years ago. Um, how does that work? Uh, or what is the advantage here is that you can pay your tuition fee uh, in, um, in a certain currency, um, like Russian rubles or the Romanian lei, US dollars. Uh, there are many more available. Um, and um, there is a fixed quote, uh, which usually is very attractive um, for uh, some 72 hours, uh, and you can um, make your payment from a local bank uh, with lower bank fees. And then um, the th third payment method is uh, a very common one, is a payment uh, through bank transfer. This, you, this works um, as follows. So we send you uh, an invoice on the due date of the payment, and then you transfer the money um, as indicated on the on the invoice. <clears throat> How can a a payment schedule looks look like um, here as an example for the executive MBA? Now, considering that the whole tuition fee is forty nine thousand euros, uh, just as a side note, this tuition fee includes everything you need for the program and for studying. Uh, this includes uh, all the books, all the case studies. Um, also, all registration and uh, administrative fees within the university, this is all covered by the, by the tuition fee. However, travel and accommodation costs are not covered. Now, back to the payment schedule. Now, uh, considering that the tuition is 49,000 euros um, in total, once you apply for the program, so once you, you submit your online application, a application fee of 200 euros falls due. This can be paid uh, with your credit card, um, and that's a standard fee for, for, for the MBA, for the MBA application. Um, once you submit the application and all the documentations which are needed around that, like recommendation letters, uh, motivation letter, and so on, um, 
this package is being checked by the program management um, and then you are invited to the admission interview. Now, after the admission interview, considering or assuming that everything goes well and you are admitted to the program, um, the 10% payment falls due. These are the 4,900 uh, euro seed confirmation fee. After that, we can then go on and split the payments. So you see here on the slide two options. One option being paying everything at once, the remaining amount. Uh, why can this be attractive? For instance, um, if your company is uh, supporting you, and I'll come to that in a couple of slides, um, then for tax reasons or for education budget reasons, this can be an advantage. So some companies prefer to pay everything uh, at once. Second option is to pay in installments. Here we have a plan we, we suggest with three installments at 0% uh, interest. So there's no additional fee. You see the dates here uh, and um, subsequently the tuition fee or the remaining tuition fee is split into these, into these payments. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this can ease the financial burden um, so that you don't have to, to make this big invest, investment at once. Just another example for a payment schedule. Now for one of the professional MBAs where the tuition fee is 33,000 euros. Again, once you apply online on our website, <clears throat> the application fee is 200 euros. As I mentioned, that's a standard application fee for all the MBAs. Once you're admitted to the program, um, again, a 10% payment falls due. Here, this is 3, uh, 300 euros uh, for the seed confirmation fee. For the professional MBA, uh, we have uh, this, uh, this schedule you can see on the slides. Um, why is it different than, uh, than the global MBA? That's the reason of, uh, of the timing because the professional MBA is longer in duration. Hence, we can sp spread the payments over a longer period. So again, you have the option to pay everything at once or to pay in two installments or to pay in three installments. And you see the dates as an example uh, on the slide. If you want to use, uh, or if you want to make more payments, so again, reducing the load of uh, the payment load for each installment, you can do so. So we can increase the, inst uh, the, inst the number of installments. However, then we have to add a, um, a surcharge, um, which is in this case, 2% of the whole tuition fee. This might be attractive um, for some of you. Uh, these 2% in this case are a little bit more than 600 euros. Again, considering that this is a, let's say an internal or a, a, an internal payment, um, payment support we offer from the university, that's a pretty reasonable fee uh, you can pay. And it's usually cheaper than uh, some of the uh, uh, student loans you can take. Um, next to the payment schedule, next to the payment with installments, uh, we do offer some scholarships. Um, in general, all the scholarships are part partial scholarships. They can cover up to 25 or 35 percent of the tuition fee, depending on the program. Uh, and they are all need-based scholarships. Um, you can see here uh, the deadlines. Uh, we'll also make sure to share uh, the presentation with you afterwards. You can also find all the information about the deadlines and the description of, the, of each scholarship on our website. Uh, just having it here um, in a nutshell for the Global Executive MBA, which is starting in, uh, in spring 2020. Um, our scholarships are running until uh, mid of December. So make sure to check them out. For the professional MBA starting next year in, in October, there is some more time until end of June uh, 2020. We, uh, we do have some uh, scholarship for female leaders. The, um, the rationale behind that is that uh, you might know that the MBA business is a quite male-dominated business. So uh, business schools uh, have a great interest to increase female uh, candidates in terms of diversity, to enhance diversity in the classrooms. This is why we want to support 
um, high potential female candidates for our MBA. And we introduced a, a scholarship dedicated to female candidates. Again, it's a need-based scholarship covering up to 25 or 35% uh, of the tuition fee. The 35% is applicable to the executive MBA in Bucharest. Here for the global executive MBA, the next deadline is December 15th, as mentioned on the previous slide. So make sure to check them out on the website. Um, next to the scholarship, um, we always have a, an early bird uh, bonus discount for the MBAs for early candidates and early applications. Um, this usually is a 3% um, deduction of the tuition fee. Um, and, um, well, why should you apply for it? Because um, it does reduce your, your tuition fee and it does reduce the tuition fee as a, on a fixed Rate. So these 3%, if you apply prior to the deadline, you get the 3% fixed. Compared to the scholarship, if you apply for the, for the scholarship, then obviously you're not sure to receive a scholarship and you don't know yet how high the scholarship will be. Um, that's why you might consider applying early for, for the, with the early bird bonus. How does it work? Each, uh, each uh, application coming in prior to the deadline is considered for the early burden bonus, so you don't need to, to indicate separately that you want to apply for the early bird. How does the application look like? Pretty straightforward here in the process. As I mentioned, there is an online uh, part of the application on our website, our online application tool, um, where you're guided through the system. We will need uh, some documentation from you. Uh, and some supporting documents. Once this is uploaded or or uploaded to to the online application and submitted, and then these this package is checked by the program management on a formal basis. Uh, if everything is here, if we have any questions, um, once everything is clear, uh, we proceed to the admission interview. Uh, how does that work? Uh, this is where we bring together you as a candidate. Uh, and our academic director and the program management, we find a date for an admission interview, which is taking place here on campus. Uh, it's a personal admission interview. And once the admission interview is over, you have the decision. Now, when it comes to the scholarships, you have three decisions. You have application, yes, no. Um, you have scholarship, yes, no. And if the scholarship uh, is a yes, then how high the scholarship will be. Um, so how do we, do we select? Uh, again, uh, obviously, and of course, we evaluate uh, the, the performance of each candidate during the interview, um, the school records, the professional track record, also potential contribution to the program. Why? Because an MBA lives out of the interaction of the candidate or of the students. So peer learning is, is, is a big issue. So we're looking for candidates who bring a lot of experience, but also willing to share this experience with their fellow students. Um, and it's, as I mentioned, in terms of the, uh, the scholarships, we will need to look at financial needs. So the, the jury will ask you to provide uh, some documentation on your financial situation. Um, just as a note, uh, and it's written here on the, on the slide, um, when it comes to the scholarship applications, if two candidates have a similar profile, a similar track record, and, a, and a, actually a similar application package, uh, then the priority in terms of the scholarship will be given to uh, the candidate with uh, the bigger uh, financial need. So here, every candidate kind of competes with, with the other candidates uh, from, from, from the application pool. There are some uh, some more external uh, pine funding options. Now, what I talked about now was uh, was our internal um, internal options and support. Um, of course, um, many students apply for educational loans. Um, here, um, what we see out of experience is that they don't cover the whole tuition fee with the with a loan, but they kind of build their financial case. Uh, and the money they get from a loan will be part of this financial case they build. 
Uh, then there are some other external funding options and databases for scholarships. You can find them all on the website, which is indicated uh, on the slide, like FastWeb, SallyMay, or scholarships.com. Here you can find grants and scholarship on an international um, uh, scale, um, various different options. So um, that's, I would say, part of the research um, candidates do prior to applying for one of the scholarships. And uh, two programs I would like to mention explicitly are Brain Capital and the Fund of Excellence uh, programs. What do they do? Uh, they invest in your future career. So it's not like a typical loan, but what they do is after you go through an assessment, they invest in, in your potential career, uh, which is going to take off hopefully after the MBA. Uh, so you agree on a on a amount of money they 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 support you with. This can be the whole tuition fee, and you start paying back after you have uh, graduated from the MBA, and you don't pay back a fixed um, a fixed amount of money each month, but a fixed percentage of your future salary. Um, now um, the the trick here is that. These programs um, have a, quite a high risk because if you don't earn any money after the MBA, they don't get any money back. That's why it's, it's kind of uh, a, a rigid assessment, but it's definitely worth checking it out. And um, the next benefit here, um, I've mentioned that in the beginning of the presentation, is tax benefits. At least here in Austria, we have a quite sophisticated tax system, I, I would say, where um, you can deduct costs for your education from your uh, annual tax load. Uh, this is also why we can, we, we can spread the payments over, uh, over a period of more than one year so that you are able to deduct um, fees each year. Um, and this can bring you back up to 50% of the, of the whole tuition fees. So as the, uh, of the whole investment you have done for the, for the tuition fee. However, it depends on how much you earn, uh, how much taxes you pay. So we definitely recommend to talk to a tax advisor um, to, to, to do the math here. Just a couple of words about um, employer support. Now, doing an MBA uh, can bring a lot of value back to your employer. Um, you, as, uh, as a student or a graduate from an MBA, you come back with a lot of fresh knowledge, of fresh skills and tools, and uh, each company and employer can make a strong use of that. Um, there are quite a few benefits for, for the organization uh, in supporting you doing an MBA. First, it's a flexible program. Our MBAs are part-time. Um, you can do them next to your job, so you don't need to... Um, to take, for instance, a sabbatical to do the MBA, but you can stay in a job and you can apply directly what you have learned. So um, you can also work together with your company in, uh, in, in regard with the master thesis. So master thesis topics are usually very hands-on and uh, students like to take topics from their company, challenges, problems they, they want to solve, uh, and they work on that topic uh, during their master thesis. As I mentioned, practical content, the content is hands-on. Uh, ideally, you come back from a module and you start implementing what you, what you have learned immediately. So again, a great value um, brought back to, to your employer. Um, since we focus also on, uh, on leadership um, in our programs, um, you will go through a strong leadership development and acquire new skills and tools uh, for leadership. Again, bringing you in a position um, where you would be a potential candidate for a new position in the company, for new responsibilities, team leading, uh, etc. How can the employer support you? And there are various options here. Uh, obviously, they can support you in paying the tuition fee. This doesn't happen too often uh, that companies pay 100% of the tuition fees. So there are a couple of, um, of aspects um, or, or arguments um, you can take uh, from this slide, for instance, uh, when negotiating the support with your, with your employers. 
For instance, you can reduce working hours, hence getting less salary uh, while doing the MBA. Or um, when you are entitled to receive a percentage, um, a variable percentage uh, as part of your salary, you can split this percentage um, and hence the, the employer saves uh, some money um, from this from these, uh, additional percentage uh, traveling. Uh, one of the main support arguments I would try to negotiate are free days for for the for the modules. Uh, this should really be a minimum so that uh, you have uh, the opportunity to save your holidays uh, and uh, and have free days from your employer for coming to the to the modules here in Vienna. Or um, the company can um, can uh, only contribute towards your travel and accommodation costs. Again, um, there are various uh, various options here on, on, on which, uh, which supporting parts to negotiate uh, with the employer. OK, for now, thank you very much. Um, that was uh, an overview of some of the uh, financing options we offer in a nutshell. Um, of course, um, I'm at your disposition for follow-up uh, talks. Feel free to get in touch with me uh, for a follow-up discussion, for a personal consultation, so with that we have a little bit more time for a more extensive discussion. I see Anna already coming back to, on the stage. Yes, hello. And she brought some questions, I hope. Definitely. Um, so our first question right off the bat is if the slides will be available after the presentation? Of course. Perfect. Yes. Okay, good. We know. will make sure to send them over to you and you can have a look at them, of course. Wonderful. Well, I wanted to come back actually to the point you mentioned that why an MBA provides so much, so many benefits for employers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that everyone's boss is happy to hear that an MBA has practical content, that the students can really go back to work on Monday and use some sort of tool that they've learned in the MBA. So I wanted to ask, can, can you give an example from maybe a class that you've seen where they've had some really hands-on practical content? Well, I can tell you a story from one of our alumni. Yes. Um, he works for BMW in the Czech Republic, um, and he's heading the stores um, in Czech Republic for, for, for the retail, um, for the cars. And what he told me is that um, his team was always a little bit scared of him coming back from the modules. Why? Okay. Um, because during the modules, he said, he, he told me he was always writing a, a little list of, of things he would like to, to introduce when he comes back. Really? And okay. his team got used to that. So once once he was into the program already, they were, they were kind of awaiting him on Monday after the modules, and they were sure that he will get all to all of them together and say, okay, I have got three skill, three tools here, three new things or ideas I want to implement. So this guy came back and started applying immediately. Another story, top of my head okay. now, mm -hmm. was uh, one of our Global Ember alumni. Um, what he did uh, through the accounting course, um, he acquired um, a couple of new methods in in doing his accounting, and he saved. In a year, a little bit more than 35k um, okay. of expenses business? for his own business. Okay. So he he brought back yeah. the knowledge right. he got from this accounting managerial accounting module. Okay. He implemented what the tools he had learned during the modules, and at the end, he ended up saving money um, from the company. Okay. So why um, I'm saying this? Like this is really hands-on. Okay. Mm -hmm. You also, just as a side note, don't expect to have four days of lecture during during the MBA frontal lecture like I'm doing it right now. Okay. Uh, expect to have a lot of uh, breakout sessions, case study work. Bring in your own topics from your company, your challenges. Discuss them with your peers. Um, so you have to consider that. There are a lot of experts sitting in this classroom, not only the, the, the professor, uh, but also the peers. Definitely, so yeah. people with uh, an average of 10 to 15 years of working experience international, on an international scale, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. can give you a lot of sparing partners for your problems at, or challenges at work. Definitely. And hold that thought on peer learning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to that. We do have another question from Andrea. 
um, she is wondering if it's possible to adapt the financing plans you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. to her particular situation. Yeah. yeah, let me go back to the slide um, mm -hmm. just to show. So, for instance, if we take um, the, the professional MBA payment plan, as mm -hmm. you see here as an example. So you see, for instance, the second uh, installment um, falls due in March 31st, 2020. Mm -hmm. Well, if this must be, or if, if you say that um, you will be able to pay or your company uh, has a deadline and they can pay, can pay it in, on beginning of March or mid-April, this is some, something where we can allow some flexibility. Um, okay. We have some deadlines um, sure, which we have yeah. to meet. But we can, we can, we can of course have a little bit of flexibility. Also, if you have, if you want to pay more in the beginning and less later, so we can, we can adapt a little adjust bit here, plan. adjust a little bit, a little bit. Okay. around your needs. So, Andrea, I hope that answers your question. Keep them coming. We have some time for you as well. Another question uh, back to the peer learning. I wanted to ask. You mentioned you select the students based on a particular background and experience, 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 <clears throat> mainly, um, well, a major part of the selection procedure. What type of experience are you looking for? Is it a management or um, a sort of experience in, in international projects? Or how does this work? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, we look at managerial experience. Um, it's a general management program. It's a master of business administration. So we deal with topics around management. Okay. Um, for some of the programs, we have some specific requirements we look at. For instance, for the executive MBAs, uh, we definitely look at leadership experience. Um, so um, our uh, our executive MBA students have an average of uh, five years of leadership experience already. That's an mm -hmm. average. Mm -hmm. uh, so we look at uh, candidates uh, with uh, leadership experience. Mm. Uh, when it comes to the professional MBAs, there we have... Um, uh, as you know, we have some spe various specializations on various topics. So just I'm taking one out, entrepreneurship and innovation. Okay. So yeah. here um, we will look at um, at your experience in managing innovation processes or setting up a company or setting up an entrepreneurial framework within, within your company, entrepreneurship uh, okay. within the company. So... What about people looking to join that area of innovation and entrepreneurship? Are, are they also allowed to perhaps start if they can show yeah. their interest? Yes, they are. Yeah. However, there we will look at the, 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 the background they bring in. Okay. Uh, the motivation will definitely be a, a strong factor we look at. Okay. Um, we know from the past that students have used the MBA or particularly the professional MBA with the specializations to switch from one industry to another or for one profession sure. to another. Mm -hmm. uh, so there we will obviously during the interview discuss this uh, with the candidates and make sure that this is the right program um, to fulfill their goals. Okay, because I'm also assuming there might be sometimes specialists out there who who perhaps are engineers and mm -hmm. who have uh, worked in this field for a long time and maybe they don't have any, let's say, uh, management experience officially mm -hmm, um, on mm -hmm, paper because mm -hmm. they're they're the lead scientist in mm -hmm. their their group but they have unofficially gained leadership experience yes. would this make them still a candidate for the global executive MBA? probably yes uh, this is something we we call we like to call lateral leadership so not okay. a formal leadership but uh but this as you mentioned informal leadership uh, just mm -hmm. as an example the mm -hmm. mba uh, historically um, was kind of created for, for technicians and for engineers. So um, back in the days, um, you, you had engineers and technicians finding themselves in, in, in managerial positions. So they were, um, they were suddenly in a position where they had a team they had to take care of, they had okay, to, yeah. to, talk of, to think about strategy, how they did to develop a division uh, or processes. So... Um, Having engineer, people with engineering background in the MBAs is something which is quite common to us. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people very often, as you mentioned, find themselves in a situation where they do lead, but they're not a leader at, in a formal way. So they, yeah. they're not head mm -hmm. of something or they're not team lead of X, Y. Uh, so we would definitely look into their problems. And speaking of problems,
profiles. Andrea asked a great question on this. Is it possible perhaps to get some feedback on her candidacy before she applies for an MBA program? Yes, please. Uh, definitely. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Um, and uh, feel free to send your... Um, here you have it, my mm -hmm. contact details. Feel free to send me your CV or LinkedIn profile, and uh, I'd be happy to give you a, a feedback and also subsequently arrange a phone call or a personal meeting where we can talk in more detail, of course. Okay, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah. So um, this would be wrapping up the end of our webinar. If you have any final questions, we're happy to take one or two more. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I would like to remind everyone of the deadlines. This is a financing webinar. So if we can just remind everyone of the deadlines yes. for upcoming scholarships. Let's just show the slide. I think this is definitely a good, a good idea. Hang on a second. So the first deadline you should keep in mind is December 15 for the uh, Global Executive MBA Scholarships. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then um, the Professional MBA, uh, which will start in October 2020. There mm -hmm. we have a little bit more time, so the deadline is end of June. Okay. Uh, so make sure to check out the web uh, the website uh, with the scholarships. Mm -hmm. uh, same goes for the Master of Legal Studies. Um, also here, the deadline is June, uh, end of June 2020. Mm -hmm. And for the Executive MBA Bucharest, um the the next uh, deadline is next year in september okay so that wraps up our webinar today here on mba and law financing options my name is anna and i'm really happy that you're here today and thank you very much for your questions and i'd like to also thank the it support in the background for making this possible and you alex for your information sharing so thank, thank you very much anna thanks for listening and um hit me up if you have any questions